Hey everyone, I've just heard some incredible news. India has become the first nation to formally acknowledge dolphins as non-human persons and has formally outlawed dolphin area and captive dolphins. There actually is quite a bit of published research indicating um, an analysis of what actually constitutes personhood, what traits separate persons from other beings. Um, and that cetacea meet those criteria. I'm going to share an article from DW, Deutschland, it's an article from Germany entitled Dolphins Gain Unprecedented Protection in India. India has officially recognized dolphins as non-human persons whose rights to life and liberty must be respected. Dolphin parks that were being built across the country will instead be shut down. India's Ministry of the Environment and Forests has advised state governments to ban dolphinariums and other commercial entertainment that involves the capture and confinement of cetacean species such as orcas and bottomless dolphins. In a statement, the government said, research had clearly established cetaceans are highly intelligent and sensitive and that dolphins should be seen as non-human persons and as such should have their own specific rights. The move comes after weeks of protest against a dolphin park in the state of Kerala and several other marine mammal entertainment facilities which were to be built this year. Animal welfare advocates welcome the decision. That's an understatement. This opens up a whole new discourse of ethics in the animal protection movement in India, said Pooja Mitra from the Federation of Indian Animal Protection Organization, FLAPO. Mitra is a leading voice in the Indian movement to end dolphin captivity. Indian officials say it is morally unacceptable to exploit cetaceans in commercial entertainment. The scientific evidence we provided during the campaign talked about cetacean intelligence and introduced the concept of non-human persons, she said in an interview with DW. India is the fourth country in the world to ban the capture and import of cetaceans for the purpose of commercial entertainment, along with Costa Rica, Hungary, and Chile. Dolphins are persons, not performers. The movement to recognize whales and dolphins as individuals with self-awareness and a set of rights gained momentum three years ago in Helsinki, Finland, when scientists and ethicists drafted a Declaration of Rights for Cetaceans. We affirm that all cetaceans as persons have the right to life, liberty, and well-being, they wrote. The signatures included Leading marine scientist Lori Marino, who produced evidence that cetaceans have large, complex brains, especially in the areas involved in communication and cognition. Her work has shown that dolphins have a level of self-awareness similar to that of human beings. Dolphins can recognize their own reflection, use tools, and understand abstract concepts. They develop unique signature whistles, allowing friends and family members to recognize them, similar to the way human beings use names. But it is precisely this ability to learn tricks and charm audiences that have made whales and dolphins a favorite in aquatic entertainment programs around the world. Disposable personal income has increased in India, and there is a growing market for entertainment. Dolphin Park proposals were being considered in Delhi, Kochi, and Mumbai. There's nothing like having a few animals on display, particular ones that are so sensitive and intelligent as dolphins, said Belinda Wright from the Wildlife Protection Society of India in an interview with DW. It's a good money-making proposition. But audiences are usually oblivious to the documented suffering of these marine performers. The majority of dolphins and whales in captivity have been sourced through wild captures in Japan, in Taiji, and the Caribbean, 
in the Solomon Islands and parts of Russia. These captures are very violent, Mitra explained. They drive groups of dolphins into shallow bay areas where young females whose bodies are unmarked and are thought to be suitable for display are removed. The rest are often slaughtered. Mitra argued that the experience of captivity is tantamount to torture. She explained that orcas and other dolphins navigate by using sonar signals, but in tanks, the reverberations bounce off the walls, causing them immense distress. She described dolphins banging their heads on the walls, and orcas wearing away their teeth as they pull up bars and bite walls. The Declaration of Rights for Cetaceans was actually written in Helsinki, Finland several years ago and proposed, and since that time has gained an incredible deal of momentum in scientific and activist communities. I pulled a link up to share with you. Okay. Institution rights. So if you want to check this out, it's www.institutionrights.org. If you've not signed, please do and share with everyone. Based on the principle of the equal treatment of all persons, Recognizing that scientific research gives us deeper insights into the complexities of cetacean minds, societies, and cultures. Noting that the progressive development of international law manifests on entitlement to life by cetaceans, we affirm that all cetaceans, as persons, have the right to life, liberty, and well-being. We conclude that one, every individual cetacean has the right to life. Two, no cetacean should be held in captivity or servitude, be subject to cruel treatment, or be removed from their natural environment. Three, all cetaceans have the right to freedom of movement and residence within their natural environment. Four, no cetacean is the property of any state, corporation, human group or individual. Five, cetaceans have the right to protection in their natural environment. Six, cetaceans have the right not to be subject to the disruption of their cultures. Seven, the rights, freedoms, and norms set forth in this declaration should be protected under international and domestic law. Eight, cetaceans are entitled to an international order in which these rights, freedoms, and norms can be fully realized. 9. No state, corporation, human group, or individual should engage in any activity that undermines these rights, freedoms, and norms. 10. Nothing in this declaration shall prevent a state from enacting stricter provision for the protection of cetacean rights. Dolphins are one of the few species that will assist other species demonstrating altruism. They're the only wild species that have saved human lives. They use tools. There are dolphins in certain parts of the world that use sponges to pad their noses when they go and get fish out of the sand. There are those that wear jewelry or adorn themselves with seagrass. There are those that cooperate with humans in fishing. There are a couple locations in the world that this happens where the dolphins will herd the fish in and slap their tails to show the fishermen where to throw their nets. Mind you, these are wild animals. There are so-called ambassador dolphins, those who choose to seek out human companionship and not stay with their own there's a recent study done that showed when dolphins from the same family were separated, they called to each other using the other's name. Just like we would if we were lost or separated from someone we love. They have the ability to think abstractly and create. There's a really good video on YouTube actually from Dr. D. Eggers. And she does present a great deal more evidence. She shares a story once about this man who was at an aquarium smoking a cigarette and
and he'd blown smoke in the glass. And of course it poofed out when it hit the glass. And this baby doll then went to his mother. Nurse got a mouthful of milk, came back, and blew the milk out to make the same type of billowy phenomenon that the smoke did. Material substitution, amazing. They're very curious and playful. They're self-aware. They recognize themselves in the mirror, and much like humans, tend to get stuck there, fascinated with, how do I look when I do this, or when I do this, or when I do, you know, different expressions. Their brains have more folds on the surface than ours. They also have very high concentration of glial cells. These are cerebral anatomical features that are typically associated with advanced intelligence. And actually, their brains are bigger than ours. In orca populations, there are actually distinct cultures, much like us. In fact, their calls have dialect. For example, the population of orca that live between Washington and um, Canada, they live in very tight families. There are matriarchal societies children stay with their moms or the males stay with their moms. They may go away to mate during the season, but they always come back. And these societies are very tight. <clears throat> if mom doesn't introduce you to a stranger, you don't talk to them in this culture. In New Zealand, though, Ingrid Visser, a prominent orca researcher and rescue expert, um, so they have a different twang to their words. And they're much more adaptable. They will interact with strangers. The evidence is overwhelming and undeniable. It's amazing news, and I really hope. And this becomes a universal acknowledgement. I'll put lots of links in the description for you guys, but this is a very big day for cetacean activists. And for the people of the sea themselves. Watch them be well-versioned ones.